Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Zara and today I'm going to be doing a review of The Lake of Heaven by Ursula K. Le Guin. This should be a relatively short review because it is a relatively short book, but this is one of those books that I think, you know, you should go into it with pretty little expectation. I wouldn't recommend really reading much about it because I didn't know much about it and I think it really took me by surprise in like the best way possible. So with that in mind, let's jump into a very, very brief summary of what this book is about. Essentially, we are following a character who has the ability to change present day when he is dreaming. That's all I'm going to say. Absolutely fascinating concept. I haven't read tons of sci-fi where like dreams play like a really central part of the plot. If anybody has any recommendations, please let me know down below because I realise that I absolutely love it. So with that in mind, let's jump into what I liked about the book. The As I mentioned, the plot is fascinating. Like, it's so fascinating. I mean, the fact that when our main character's dreams are altered and that alters reality, like, that's just such a cool concept. I've never, ever seen or read that in any other medium and I just absolutely ate it up. I really, really, really enjoyed it. And we get a lot of exploration around that and I'll talk more about that when I go on to themes. But I think it's just the way that Le Guin approaches it is very accessible. But at the same time, for people who are like really nerdy about this stuff, like me, like you're going to get enough from it that it doesn't feel like it's very surface level. Like it's very, very beautifully written and you get completely sucked into what our main character is going through. As always, the writing is also very solid, but it is quite dense in comparison to the Earthsea Cycle. I remember the Earthsea Cycle took me a little bit of time to get into because I'd never read that type of fantasy before, but after that it was very easy for me to get through, whereas this it took me a while and I noticed when I was like particularly tired I couldn't read it because I was not taking in what was being written. So I do think it is one of those books that like you need to be kind of like in the right frame of mind, not too tired. Otherwise, you're not really going to be able to enjoy and appreciate what a masterpiece this book is. It is the sort of book to read slowly, really think about what's happening. And there's so much packed into this like 230 page book that you really need to give the time to really enjoy it. Let's move on to characters. So there are a few characters that I'm going to talk about. So our main character, or is a really interesting character. You know, we get a lot of kind of reflection on his mental state. And as he begins to realize what he's capable of, we kind of start to see how that mental state gets impacted. And I think he's a very realistic character, even though this is science fiction, like he feels like a real character. It feels like his responses to what he's going through are very real like I feel like I would probably react in a similar way to him or I at least know people who would react in a similar way to him if they were in the same situation so he's very very relatable the next one is Dr Haber Harbour I think it's Haber uh, and he's uh, essentially kind of positioned as being a bit of a chancer and he tries to take advantage of all's capability and that's not a spoiler we you literally read that in the blurb but he tries to take advantage of all and use it to his benefit and again i also think he's very realistic i think a lot of people would probably try to do that if they found out that you could manipulate someone in their dreams and then that would impact the reality which again i think is is so like it's such a compelling thing to consider and i think he's one of those villains that I think a lot of people would actually end up being like. He's not like straight up evil per se. He's definitely a shade of grey and it's very, very compelling to read. And then lastly, I'm going to briefly mention Heather. I really liked her interactions with Orr. I think, you know, she's a classic, very intelligent woman who kind of knows what she's doing and knows what she's about. And she also has a lot of empathy. I just loved her interactions with Orrs. They were like my favourite bits, them two together. And uh, I only wish we'd had more time with her. And then I'm going to talk about themes. So naturally, one of the big themes of this book is kind of how small, small changes can have huge consequences. You know, you make one tiny little tweak here and it can have a huge consequence on the future. Um, there's a lot of political discussion in this book. Like we get a lot of mentions around like the Middle East and 
um, the kind of the kind of political instability in the Middle East and how that gets impacted by certain decisions that are made by Orr and Dr. Haber. Like it's it's so large in scale. I think for a book this short is pretty remarkable and it never ever feels like it's just been tacked on. Like it feels like a really critical part of the story. And so I really love that seeing how these two people kind of doing things impacts the broader global landscape. It's just so compelling to read. And then there's another really interesting theme that kind of broadly comes up at the end, which is the idea of like how humans always need to have an enemy to fight. I'm not going to say more than that, but it's just it was one of the things that really stuck with me after I finished the book. And I just thought, oh, maybe we are just kind of programmed to be that way. And that's not necessarily a good or a bad thing. It's just something that we have to accept. And I thought that was really interesting. But another thing that was explored was how like, even if you removed things like racism and equality, like gender equality and things like that, that wouldn't necessarily benefit us in a way that you would expect. Yeah, she poses some fascinating questions in this book that really, really make you think. Uh, and without a doubt, it's one of my favourite sci-fi books that I've read this year. And it's without a doubt a book that I'm going to reread again because it really hits onto some really interesting topics. I gave this book a 4.5 stars. It was really solid. The only reason why I didn't give it a full five is because I do think it does get a little bit dense in areas. That is purely a personal preference thing. I think if you like really dense sci-fi, you're going to love it and get through it really quickly. For me, I really enjoyed it. I would have liked certain parts of the book to be a little bit less dense, but that's a me problem, not a Ursula K. Le Guin problem. So that was the only thing stopping me from giving it a five stars, but 4.5 is, is still amazing. And I feel like this is one of those books that the more I read it, the more I'm going to appreciate and love it. And I'll probably end up giving it a five stars anyway. So let me know down below if you have read this. I've not met many people who have read it and I'm really curious to hear your thoughts. Obviously this is a relatively quick review. There's a lot of stuff going on in that book that I just absolutely adored, but I'm just giving you a snapshot of that definitely pick it up like I think a lot of you who watch my channel and you know we we all tend to read similar things I think you're really gonna love this book and I think it really deserves to get more attention I'll see you down in the comments folks thanks for watching stay safe take care and I will see you soon bye